Hi, the Black Talk Media Project would like to invite you to become a member of the BTR Community subscription-based social media platform. BTR Community is a platform that was set up for the listening audience of Black Talk Radio Network, the number one independent black radio network online. For just $24 per year, your subscription gives you access to an interactive space to share information with like-minded people with your privacy guaranteed. Your subscription will go a long way to help us maintain and improve our current media platforms. It will also help provide a budget so that we can begin the task of establishing localized media centers and radio stations across the United States. The best way to show your support and appreciation for what we do here at Black Talk Radio is to subscribe. Help us to help you be informed. Join btrcommunity.com today. Views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Thank you for listening to Black Talk Radio News with Scotty Reed. I am joined by Max Parthis to discuss his delve into the Nixon tapes, which are recordings made by the former president between February 1971 and July 1973. President Richard Nixon secretly recorded 3,700 hours of his phone calls and meetings across the executive offices. These recordings played a leading role in the resignation of the 37th President of the United States on August the 9th, 1974. They remain perhaps the greatest treasure of information ever left by a president, as well as the most complex, controversial set of presidential records in U.S. history. However, today, these recordings remain relatively unexplored on non-Watergate topics. Max Parthis started listening to the recordings, which are published at nixontapes.org and publishing excerpts. Max is concerned about reports that only one person is reviewing the tapes and the chance that the person will edit sensitive information that will be of importance to both the black and slavery abolitionist communities. Max recently published audio excerpts where Nixon is discussing how the mainstream media, newspapers, television, and radio are self-censoring information who are part of or acting on the request of members of the not-so-secret-anymore Bohemian Club. The recording is from 1971, and interestingly, the next year, the Frank Church Senate hearings on Operation Mockingbird exposed the CIA planning stories in the American press. This was also a tactic used by the J. Edgar Hoover's FBI COINTELPRO operation to discredit civil rights activists and anti-Vietnam War protesters. Thank you for joining me today, Max, and can you tell us in your words why you decided to undertake this monumental task of reviewing these recordings? Uh, yes, absolutely, brother. Uh, I'll tell you in my own words why I took on this undertaking. First of all, uh, I had been getting reports and reading different reports now for a couple of years, ever since the first of the Nixon tapes were released and the media got a hold of them. And some of the quotes that came out of there only really convinced me of what I had already known to begin with. And that is that Richard Nixon, the first president to uh, be forced to resign, for crimes was a racist and a sociopath and that he specifically designed the war on drugs to target black people as a response to the black liberation movement of the 60s and he took it upon himself as you said to record his own conversation some 3700 hours worth of audio tape and throughout that audio tape he acts like he doesn't no, he's being recorded. I mean, he literally says some of the most amazing quotes you'll ever hear. 
I'll give you a couple of examples of what has already been published. Nixon said, we're going to put more of these little Negro bastards on the welfare rolls, the 2,400 a family. Let people like New York Senator Pat Moynihan believe in all that crap, but I don't believe in it. Work, work, throw them off the rolls. That's the key. I have the greatest affection for blacks, but I know they're not going to make it for 500 years. They aren't. You know it too. The Mexicans are around a different cup of tea. They have a heritage. At the present time, they steal. They're dishonest. But they do have some concept of family life. They don't live like a bunch of dogs, which the Negroes do live like. And then there's another quote where he said, Bill Rogers has got, to his credit, it's a decent feeling, but somewhat sort of a blind spot on the black thing because he's been in New York. Well, they are coming along. And that, after all, they are going to strengthen our country in the end because they are strong physically, and some of them are smart, and so forth and so on. My own view is I think he's right if you're talking in terms of 500 years. He said, I think he's wrong if you're talking in terms of 50 years. What has to happen is they have to be, frankly, inbred. And you just, that's the thing, the only thing that's going to do it, Rose, That's an acting president sitting in the White House talking about how black people need to be inbred. And when he says inbred, he is talking about assimilation, about integration, about just making them vanish. (laughs) So I also looked further, Scotty, and I saw that the only person who is handling the editing is Luke A. Nichter. He's a professor of history at Texas A&M University. And I don't challenge his credentials, which are listed there in full detail. What I challenge is the possibility that he might be a freaking racist and might purposely omit or take out things that have not been found yet that could be incredibly damaging, not only to the U.S. government, but also to uh, the, the people who surrounded Nixon then and now. And if you just take a look at the uh, NixonTapes.org, you'll see an image of this uh, person who is a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, white Texas A&M University professor. I think it's uh, it's dangerous just to have this person going through these very sensitive tapes. So I took it upon myself to start listening, and I asked a few other people to help me out. I've only gotten in a few hours work, Scotty, and I wasn't looking for anything about the Bohemian Groves, but I happened to find it. It popped right up there, and I sat there listening to a sitting president discuss the power possessed by this secret society, how deeply embedded they were in all of our systems, and how they were told uh, that they have to put loyalty to the society ahead of loyalty to the nation. He even talked about how uh, specific network televisions uh, uh, companies were bought out by the Nixon administration to specifically either not talk about Bohemian Groves or if they do talk about it, only talk about it once and then try to spin it so it sounds better. This is 1971. Nobody was really talking about the Bohemian Groves until, you know, 2007. So we're going back to this secret society having this kind of power back with Nixon. Anyway, the tape will unfold and show all of that. What I I have been asking... I would like to add a side note to that is that the Bohemian Club existed well before Nixon came to power as I found information that the Manhattan Project, which produced America's nuclear weapon, was discussed at the club first. Right. The atomic bomb was birthed at the Bohemian Groves. Amazing. So, yeah, when Kennedy was talking about uncovering these secret secret societies, I have to wonder now if the Bohemian Groves was what he was talking about. Um, So in any case, I've been asking people to if they if they have time, you don't have to sit there and do it for hours. I'm not doing it for hours. When I have some free time, I sit and listen to uh, a particular tape all the way through and tell, you know, see if I can find anything. So if you have that time, do that, because I believe the smoking gun to our problems will be found right there in the Nixon tapes. And uh, we need people to research it and look through it who are not who are who don't have the potential to be as biased as the one person looking through them now. And I plan on making a forum on uh, Facebook and on the BTR community where people can start to uh, organize our study efforts on this and share the information we find. Well, let's get into this excerpt that you have provided me with. It's about 
nine minutes long at any time that you would like me to stop the recording so that we can focus in on any particular thing that's said, just let me know, Max. Right, and you do the same, Scotty. If something stands out for you, just stop it. So what I mean, uh, go to the go where things can there is. We have now discovered that Scott Perry is the person to go, is opposed to your coming. Uh, he's okay, to be knocking off. Well, I don't know. I, I guess, I've been trying to check it out, and I don't think so, but I just didn't like right it. Right. 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 Ron, at my suggestion, talk to Walter Cohen last night. I asked him to call in to get squared away on the press, the whole, you know, the reaction press thing and all that. Uh, why aren't you, you, your speech is going to be reported. CBS has already told Ron that they've made a deal and they've, they've got it covered. Uh, hey, Scott, I stop right there. Reported by, by a guest, by a member, probably. Uh, you may have to rewind it just a little bit, but right now, just so people understand, he's talking about a public image of the Bohemian Groves and how he just recently contacted CBS and they agreed to his demands. He'll go in further on not only CBS, but also two other stations or networks that he uh, confronted and made demands to, and they succeeded to these demands except one. Now, I would like to bring that into current context in the 2016 presidential uh, contest uh, through emails that were revealed by WikiLeaks. There was a strategy that was thought up by the Clinton campaign called the Pied Piper strategy. And this strategy was to get their quote unquote friends in the media. And it has been revealed that high level members of the Obama administration had siblings who work in the mainstream media. And the strategy was to elevate people like Ted Cruz and Donald Trump by giving them extensive media coverage above and beyond any coverage that any of the other Republican candidates got. Um, also, I was listening to a, I'm trying to recall the man's name. I think it's Ed Schultz. Okay, he used to work for MSNBC and he works for Russia. Works for Russia Today, the uh, Washington-based media company that focuses on politics and issues here in the United States. So he mentioned that he was due to do a live coverage um, while he was at, M at MSNBC of Bernie Sanders announcing his candidacy for president. And he got a call from executives at MSNBC telling him that they were pulling the plug and they were not going to cover it. I think that it that I think that shows that the practice is still uh in existence and that the American public is still being manipulated by people in high places with political power using the American based media. Yeah, this is actually they're talking about criminal activities. I mean, what kind of country do we live in where the president dictates to the media what they talk about and literally pays them off in doing so. So, Scott, if you just rewind it a little bit, we'll start from there. You know, the reaction, press thing, and all that. Uh, the wire, sir, you, your speech is going to be reported. CBS has already told Ron that they've made a deal and they've, they've got it covered. Uh, UPI has... Or, 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 by a guest, by a member, probably. UPI has uh, refused to abide by our, our uh, press rule. They will not in any way take, the, they wouldn't consider any pool coverage, you know, that proposal that we had talked about. They wouldn't consider because they, they will, they say they can get the story and they're not going to be bound by any rules not, not off the record. I want to stop it right there because I mentioned in the opening of this podcast that the CIA, through Operation Mockingbird, was planning stories in the American press. And you can actually pull up a YouTube video of Frank, former Senator Frank Church, who I believe is deceased now, where he mentioned that the CIA was publishing stories and they had the cooperation of UPI. So while it may seem like they're being ethical 
in not agreeing to uh, Nixon's rules, they were working with the CIA. And that is all recorded in transcripts from that committee, the Frank Church Committee, uh, on the CIA planning stories in American press. In this conversation what you're referring to right here, Nixon uh, basically says UPI refused to do what they told them to do, but they're only going to play it once and then they're going to put a good spin on it. So they're on board in that manner. So it's really a paper protest. Let's continue. Uh, the Grove concern that Troy had, Troy had talked with Ron about the coverage thing on that. It ended Ron had to wait a bit. Let me say, my Troy man was a cold. And so it was for my coming for several letter said it against it. And I wrote said, I agreed. I wouldn't come right back this way. And I should have filled Ron in on this before he talked to the Troy. I did it. You did it. Okay. Yeah. Did Ron tell Trojan the plan to come in without the president, yes. without Secret Service? Yes, he knows. It. Yeah. What was Trojan's view? Kind of not coming. Trojan's view was not coming. He still wanted, you know, he didn't get it. Ron didn't raise the question whether it'll come or not come. They finished the whole thing, and Ron said something about, well, I guess everybody's, you know, looking forward to this or something. And Trojan said, well, can I speak with you very frankly? And Ron said, of course. Then he said, let me point out that there are, and this apparently is, is some of the old guard. I can see how. Would be there. Hey, stop but it right there, Scott. Just to put it in perspective, what he's doing right now is talking about how members are going in, and because they're such high uh, station members, like congressmen, presidents, vice presidents, things like that, they're bringing in these secret service, and the secret service is leaking out secrets that shouldn't be leaked out. So the Grove was saying, and he said the old guards in particular, old guard members are people who have been members of the Bohemian Grove for 40 years or more. He's saying the old guard members are saying, you got to leave those people behind and come by yourself. And then later at one point, he even mentions that Nixon shouldn't come at all because it's causing too much controversy. And that kind of reminds me again, I like to try to make things uh, relevant to recent happenings and news that we see occurring during this time period. But that just reminds me the commentary on the Secret Service leaking information. I would call them those people whistleblowers, just like we have, I think his name was Jeffrey Skilling, who blew the whistle on the CIA torture program and was prosecuted by the Obama administration for leaking that information. His brother is a member of the group who has uh, talked about uh, has so low key his advance that, that he had, can't give me much of a reading mark. But he said one of the concerns is that, that breaks the growth tradition. No, it's not that it breaks the tradition, it's that it puts a public spotlight on the growth. And that there is the appearance there of this secret gathering over three weeks of all the power in the country and what the hell are they up to, for one thing. Yeah. The other thing, the drinking and debauchery business right, is there. They've got a lot of prostitutes in the area apparently that they bring in and uh, they're afraid that's going to be apparently the huge encampment of the lumber mill or something I don't know Monterey, you know, you know, it's much real but uh, all the horrors they've got it isn't that bad that's really talk I mean, you know, I'm sure it is it's, it's a part of it it's, I want to stop it right there you mentioned Donald Trump uh, possible alleged use of prostitutes that's what if I'm not mistaken and I heard that clearly Nixon was expressing a concern about the debauchery and the prostitutes uh, that these members would bring in to the club. And then you got future presidential candidates or congressional candidates. I'm not sure, but he said a candidate for government, um, you know, there as well. And so what I guess what he's expressing concern is, is that that information could be used to blackmail a future president or congressperson. And, you know, we've seen those concerns expressed about Donald Trump and the infamous Steele dossier where they claim that he had people peeing on him in, in Russia and what have you. Yes, Scotty. And, you know, the Bohemian Groves. And, you know, I, as I got to repeat, I didn't go in looking for this. I'm looking for proof that the war on drugs was specifically meant to target black people and to use that in an international court of law as proof of crimes against humanity perpetrated by the president of the United States of America. That was my goal. I was as shocked as hell to, to hear this, and I suspect I'll hear a lot more. Bohemian Groves has uh, a history 
of using live sacrifices in uh, their ceremonies, which is called, uh, I believe it is the uh, ceremony of discarding care or something like that, where they worship this ancient god and uh, swear to not give a damn about anybody. So yeah, this is this is powerful, and it shows that the president, while he was an acting president, was a member working within this group, and his priorities superseded that of the United States government and its people. Instead, his priorities and his allegiance was to the Grove. He was doing what they told him to do. He was uh, relaying this information to an unknown uh, person by the name of Bob. And people assume it might be uh, Ehrlichman or one of those, but I don't know yet. In any case, this is a confession of crimes. (laughs) Anyway, I'm done. There you go, Scotty. It's part of every little tradition. And uh, some of the underdogs move down there and screw around. But it's... uh... They're afraid that by putting the spotlight on, let me say this, also that the location of the road will be so pinpointed publicly. Let me, let me say that straight. I, I frankly don't think myself, and I, I, I just don't think that we should have probably gone through this earlier. And I think we can gracefully get out of it. Uh, we, uh, uh, what the hell, so I don't come. And uh, then, uh, then frankly, there will be a lot of people within the grove. Those people that think I should have will just be pissed off as hell at the old guard. And the old guard guys will have to take it. We'll just say the president in deference to the, to the, to the he puts the grove of the idea of coming. He'd like to come and will not come. I think we ought to do it that way. And I just don't think we ought to chuck it out there. I'm trying to get around all the negatives. I don't like our negatives in other regions. Uh, big borders out there. I've been trying to get, uh, I get to him. You see, don't have people that just sort of tell us that who would like this? Let me say this: I know the group well. The overwhelming majority would love it. Is it is that's the overwhelming majority would love. It. That's no more. But on the other hand, it's like these goddamn conservatives. Uh, the overwhelming majority would love it, and a few goddamn nitpickers could sure. just knock your brains out. Sure. I don't know Bear who the hell he is. What's he? He is uh, Walter Bear. Is his name? He's at a Price Waterhouse in New York. Oh, Price Waterhouse. I met him. He's an accountant. I've been his about your age, I guess. Uh, uh, one of the older guys. Yeah. Oh, and I don't know this bear guy. The one I know is Julia Bear. Probably smart. This was the place of the rest. And what Joanne then said is, Baird is your ticket. Baird, when our man sent got there, he yelled at Baird. And Baird, the man sent said, is there, uh, he asked the first question about a helicopter landing. Baird said, let me start out by saying that I sincerely hope that in making this quick check, he will then report back to Washington that it isn't feasible for the president to come. But Mike said as they got through the whole thing, and Mike made it clear to him we didn't plan to bring any reporters, you didn't plan to have secret service men, you weren't going to bring a whole entourage in and all this stuff, that he backed down. By the time they finished the, the planning meeting, Barry was really quick. Uh, are we sure this? Okay, we cannot let the fence man, you know, uh, you know, uh, talk themselves into, into what we want. You know, get the goddamn truth with our heart off. I told him that he said it. But he said the guy said at the beginning that, but he said by the time we were there, we didn't push the helicopter. We didn't push the, uh, you know, anything. You know, that he back, he, he by then was was his guard was much more relaxed. Uh, Trojan says that Baird sent you a very tough letter earlier in the year saying, please do not come to the Grove. But Trojan intercepted the letter. Oh, I didn't get it. Yeah. Baird apparently consulted with him, with Trojan, and Trojan said, you can't write a letter like that to the President of the United States. And to to this guy, again, I, I think what we're hearing now is a, the explanation of why the Grove feels like they've been getting too much exposure because of the high profile members. They're like, we didn't send the helicopter. We normally send a helicopter to get these guys, but this time we didn't send a helicopter and we didn't have a motorcade and we didn't have all these things. And at one point we even had to say, look, too many people are paying attention. So just don't come at all this time. You just skip it because they're following you. Right. I think, wow. I think we heard uh, earlier was he was saying that they don't want the location to be given up. Well, they, I think they, what they were saying is that it's becoming very public. And once it becomes ex-public, amount, so much people know it just becomes a target. So the, uh, he may have been 
discussing uh, the potential of moving the location. But I think that tradition won't let them do that. Bohemian, you can't tell about why did he write it up? Why did he write it up? Buried because of this. Buried because it has uh, been discussed amongst others and by God. You say you decided, no, this is what happened to it. Buried down the ground, you don't know. But then they don't think it's political. That was why Trohan wrote his letter to you saying you shouldn't come. Right. He wrote a mile or letter. Well, Trohan, there he is. Trohan was the one that urged me to come earlier. I know. He's tricked the city. That's right. And he changed his mind. So I said, fine, I won't go. And Trohan's view now is not that it's, you know, that there's any unanimous view you shouldn't come. It's that there is a a little segment. Is it worth it, though? Is it really worth it to go the hell out there and have a little segment raising hell? Well, that's my question. That's my question. We've got to go. stop it there he said the wire services that's api upi what they're talking about okay. is these news wire services that are there also uh picked up by smaller out news outlets you know like on a subscription base um on a subscription base because i once tried to interview a person who had written an article that was published by the associated press and he said that he could not in, do the interview with me because it was against the rules of the Associated Press. And so we just heard him say that the uh, the executives of these wire services were fully on board and also members. members of the Grove. Yep. Old Guard members. So this is really just confirming um, the Frank Church Committee, the Cointel Pro operations um, to demonize the Black Panther Party, Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X in the press, in the press participated. So, you know, this is just really confirming or more confirmation of what people should know because a lot of people, millions and millions of people tune in to the corporate media and it's really a lot of fake and distorted news. And this is why I believe there is an attack on independent media. Pretty much is a confession of all of that by a sitting president right here in this little eight minute tape. Well, we have about a, a one minute left and we will go ahead and play that out. Fine, that's the point. What about the gridiron analogy? You don't buy that? No. Why? Well, they don't buy it just because that's their quarter. It's a different place. And, is that uh, part of the this was a part that confused me. He was talking about another group called the Gridirons or something like that. And I've never heard of them. The press is in a gridiron, too. Yeah. And they filed a formal protest on the gridiron last year. But they, the neighbors said, no, no, the working press is Because there's only 50 members of the gridiron. The people that aren't members are what they've got against it. We're sure smart enough to do that son of a bitch this year. No, don't you agree? Getting out of the gridiron and the White House correspondence. Well, that's the smartest thing we're going to do, believe me. But, uh, well, Bob, I'll tell you. Okay, that's pretty much it right there. Looks like they were um, wrapping it up. I did look up the Grit Iron Club and. A Google entry says it's a charitable organization. The Grid Iron Club and Foundation was founded in 1885 as the Grid Iron Club of Washington, D.C., one of the oldest and one of the most prestigious journalistic organizations in Washington, D.C. So there's a, another connection to the media being controlled wonder, by members of these secret societies. Hmm. 1885, 20 years after the emancipation, just around the time that the KKK was born. 
Right. And this also, you know, we can point to this as there was all white white supremacy has always been promoted through the American press. And I'm sure that these organizations, these journalistic organizations were behind or had a hand in all of the racist commentary and news reports that were coming out uh, concerning the oppression of black people. Cause you got to figure this is doing the black codes. I bet you they wrote publications justifying com- convict leasing and the like. Yeah, this is, this is powerful, man. And I, let me ask you a question. Do you think that just this we're here, what we listen to today is evidence for crimes of, I don't know, even up to treason? Because literally you're betraying your own government. You're, it is subversive. Uh, it is right. subversive. Yes, it is. Man. And then on top of that, to show without a doubt, he's telling you that both of these wire services are run by people who are old guard members of the Bohemian Groves. And their allegiance is not to the news. It's to the Bohemian Groves. Yes, and whatever it is, the they truth. want to get out. Yes, yeah, not to the truth. It's not to facts. Maybe this will get out further and, and it will cause a buzz. In the meantime, I'm going to keep looking because if we can find this in, in only a couple of hours, it's a, you know, imagine what is else is in there. And before they disappear from public uh, access, please give us a hand to go through these. I want to end this broadcast with a quote from Malcolm X. This is the quote that caused me to found the Black Talk Media Project, which manages the Black Talk Radio Network. So let me pull that quote up. And this is Malcolm X's quote. The media is the most powerful entity on earth. They have the power to make the innocent guilty and to make the guilty innocent. And that's power because they control the minds of the masses. There was a warning that was issued by Malcolm X in mid-1960s, and it's prophetic. It's very prophetic, as I'm not sure he was aware of all of these connections to these secret societies uh, that these executives of the American media had. But Max, I want to thank you for joining me today. Did you have any final comments Yes, uh, real quick, I just want to quote my brother Swift Justice, who recently told me that in reply to my uh, asking, you know, what can people do? They're asking me what they can do. He said, it's not about what you can do. It's what you are willing to do. Think about it. Thank you, Scotty. I appreciate you allowing me to share this story here on Black Talk Radio Network with Scotty Reed. Look forward to our next program of New Abolitionist Radio this Wednesday at 8 p.m. right here on the same network. This has been Scotty Reed of BTR News reporting. Support independent media today by giving a tax-deductible donation to the Black Talk Media Project, which has been providing public digital media since 2008.